Ashley Sellers, speech language pathologist and owner and operator of Speech, Language and Beyond. I'm coming to you today to talk with you about some ways that you can use puzzles in therapy. Now the puzzles I'm using today are all Melissa and Doug puzzles. They are the chunky puzzles. Um, and I love them because they're easy for the children to manipulate. The pictures are also big enough for them to be able to see and to be able to match. Now there are three top reasons for why I love to use puzzles because of the types of skills that they highlight. Number one, when children are able to match the puzzle pieces, this lets me know that they're processing information. They're able to look at the pieces that you give them, such as this, look at the piece that matches it on the board, and they're able to process to themselves, okay, these two things, they look the same, so I can put them here. So it lets me know, number one, that they're processing information. I also love them because it is an easy place to start for children who are, you're working on them identifying objects. So if I, once they put them on the board and they're all here, I normally will tell them, okay, well, where is the pig? Where is the sheep? Where is the cow? Once they can do that, to me, it's doing two things. First of all, they're following, they are processing information enough to where they know what a question sounds like and they know how to respond to that appropriately and find the pictures that I'm identifying. So it's building up their receptive vocabulary. What I normally do before they put them on the board, I will have all the pieces in my hand, I will hold them up and I will ask, what is this? It is introducing them to a question. It gives them the inflection pattern of your voice going up at the end to let them know they're being asked a question. And there's also a response that's expected. So that part, they're also working on the naming. So you have them processing information, learning how to listen to a question, knowing what a question sounds like, and being able to respond to a command based on a question and to provide a response based on a question. So those tips are very important for why I use puzzles. Okay, so let me show you something interesting. Well, when you look at this puzzle, you may see just a form animal puzzle. And you may do the simple thing of getting them to match it, identify it, and name it, and that's fine. But what I also see here is an opportunity for you to work on open syllables or working on a child being able to imitate speech sounds, especially a child that's not really using words. So you have nay with the horse. You have moo with the cow. Oink, oink with the pig cock a doo 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 with the chicken and then quack quack with the duck and then normally for barn I normally would do the b b b b sound to get them to imitate it bad for the sheep and then for the goats I normally do <laughs> or the g g g sound. So when you look at this one, not only can you get them to name the animals and to identify them, but you can also work on them imitating sounds. So and those sounds that I imitated are open syllable sounds that will help to stimulate their ability to use sounds and to put them in words. So that's what I see when I see this puzzle. Now for this one, what you may see still is simply things that you can name, but I may take it a step further with some of my children that I'm actually working on WH questions with. So with this one, we have, what is this? This is a car. What do we do with the car? We drive the car. So you're working on them talking about object function and putting it in a sentence. Where do you find a tree? You find the tree outside. What do you do with the house? You live in the house. What does an airplane do? An airplane, it flies. Where does it fly? In the sky. How does the sun feel? The sun feels hot. You can find the sun in the sky. Where do you find the cloud? You find the cloud 
in the sky. So you can use this one to target object function and getting them to pair that noun with the verb to also build their sentences where they can use two to three words to answer a question. And then you can also turn it around and say, okay, and have them identify things by attribute by saying, show me something that we can drive and they should give you the car. Show me something that we live in and they would give you the house. Show me some things that we can find in the sky and they may point these out. Um, show me something that flies. Show me something that's hot. Show me something that looks white and soft and fluffy. So that's another way, getting them to identify the objects by attributes as well. So that's another way that you can use these puzzles outside of just naming and identifying them. And this last one is what I love. So of course we have shapes here and we have colors and we can identify all of these things based on the shape and the color as a way to teach them to the child and of course getting them to match them. But what I see here is an opportunity to work on adjectives and nouns, combining them together in a short sentence by saying, okay, what do we have here? Tell me about this circle, green circle. What do we have? green circle and it's building on their ability to add adjectives which is the color to the shape green circle or you can say what can you tell me about the circle the circle is green the circle is round this is a green round circle as a way to also build it into a sentence so for the next one, what can you tell me about the square? This is a yellow square, yellow square. The yellow square is made like a box. The yellow square is made like a box. You're building that sentence, you're adding in the adjective. Same thing, orange diamond, blue rectangle, red oval, purple star, pink heart, blue triangle. So this is a way to also build on their ability to add adjectives to sentences. So this just gives you different ways at home, in therapy, or even as a graduate clinician, if you're looking for ideas, ways that you can take just regular objects that we already have in our possession and turn them into another thing for therapy to work on extra objectives. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you find it useful and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.